Welcome back everyone to another episode of Design Today. I am your host, Dylan Winspear, and on this episode, we are gonna do something a little bit different. We're jumping into a Q&A session, so let's do it. Hope you all are doing fantastic on this Tuesday morning, uh, or whenever you watch it, it doesn't have to be Tuesday. This is Design Today, and we are going to do something a little bit different. Like I mentioned, it's time for a QA session. Uh, I like to do these occasionally just because it allows me the opportunity to do something unscripted, uh, unrecited, Re recited, uh, reci recitable. It's not recited. That's why I do these things because everything else is so rote, uh, and I like freeballing it. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't know, we're gonna run with it. Um, long story short, no, this is not uh, scripted like I do on the other episodes. It's just it's just me and the mic and the camera and, and your questions. So uh, we're gonna jump into that in just a second. Before I do, I want to make another plug for the Design Today community. Uh, as you know, we're building a UX community. It's growing, it's thriving. There's a lot of chatter going on, great discussions happening. Uh, you can jump into that Slack group and join us. Uh, you can jump into the newsletter, but truthfully, I haven't really sent out a newsletter yet, so don't worry about getting spammed by newsletters. It's, it's not really happening. Just quite haven't gotten quite around to it yet. Um, anywho, uh, the, the community, though, is fun, and we've got great UX designers who are hungry, who are learning, and who are willing to work. Uh, we've got great participants who you can get a lot of knowledge and resource from, uh, mentorship. It's just... It's a pretty good time. So if you're interested in joining, go over, jump onto designtoday.com, look for the community. You can figure it out from there. Uh, additionally, there is a Patreon page uh, if you're interested. And just this week, we got these pretty cool stickers in. So the first batch of stickers is here. Uh, for my patrons who sign up, they will get those stickers in the mail. Uh, it's all pretty cool. Uh, again, I appreciate your support. This is a labor of love. I'm not getting paid for it, uh, but it does take some time. So any support that you can give is definitely appreciated. All right, you ready to jump into this? Let's go ahead and start pulling out some questions. Again, these are not uh, premeditated answers. This is me uh, just going with it. And uh, maybe you'll find at the end of this is, well, Dylan, there's a reason you uh, recite these a little bit more. Uh, but we're just going to forget about that right now, and I'm going to pull up these questions. Okay, the first question. Uh, what do you have to do to get companies to call you for interviews? How do you tackle the whole no work experience? All right, that is a question I've gotten in the past. Times are a little bit different right now for it, though. So what do you do to get your companies to call you back for interviews? Uh, if you're not getting phone calls, and you're just like, I don't know, applying cold for a job, maybe you rethink that strategy. Um, I would try reaching out to the people beforehand so they know that they can expect your application to come in uh, so they keep an eye out for it. I think that will increase the likelihood of you getting a phone call. Guys, I've said this before. I've never had luck doing cold applications and I wouldn't depend on it for me personally. Uh, I'm fortunate enough still to have a job, but I'm telling you, if I got fired tomorrow, I would not be applying for jobs just cold like that. It, it's not my style. It's not how I would want to depend my livelihood. I would, I would find a way to network myself into a position. So if you're not getting phone calls, chances are you haven't networked your way into that position. Chances are you could probably do with reaching out and trying to rub shoulders with who might be looking to do the hiring and uh, get to know them a little bit before just cold applying. You might go, okay, well, I need a job now and I can't get to know the entire community before applying. I get that. But again, if you're not in that position right now, start networking. Do it sooner rather than later so that you don't find yourself in that position. And if you are in that position right now, start small. Just start figuring out who you can get to know. Let them know that you're going to be applying and, and go from there. Uh, how do you tackle the whole no work experience? Uh, start working. 
at the end of the day, don't try and pull the wool over my eyes as if your school stuff was real world work experience. That's not the way of going about it. Um, but if you haven't held down a full time job, how do you get out of the whole? I don't have any work experience. Listen, at the end of the day, someone's going to have to take a shot on you. So hopefully you can ask somebody to take a shot on you who you built a repertoire with. If you don't have work experience, it doesn't mean you can't be working. Start freelancing. Look for side hustles. Look for side gigs. I just did a little mock interview with a uh, designer last week or the week before that. And uh, one of the things that they said that they're doing is they're freelancing UX design for free just to get more at-bats. And I can't stress the importance of that enough. Get your at-bats. Get practice. And, uh, and ultimately, I think you'll be able to overcome some of that whole, I don't have full-time work experience with the amount of experience you do have. Uh, I think that's still appealing. What are your thoughts on newmorphism? And also, how do you actually spell newmorphism? <laughs> it's a good question. What are your thoughts on newmorphism? Uh, it's something actually that popped up in the Slack group, and there was some dialogue on it already, so I'm not going to go too far in depth. I agree. Newmorphism, what is it? It's a design trend that popped up on Drivel a couple months back, maybe at the end of last year. Uh, it's kind of that blend between like skewmorphism and material, uh, depending on, it depends or relies on light sources to kind of give uh, textures and, 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 and whatnot. But you know, what is it? It's a design trend. Is it something that's going to last? I don't know. My biggest grievance with it is accessibility. Honestly, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend like I have every answer for it. If you are interested, I remember the most, um, accurate or I don't know the article that I read that resonated the most with me was on medium. I can drop a link to that in the description. Uh, developing pneumorphism is a struggle, uh, again, cause you depend on a highlight here and a shadow here, and that can prove to be problematic, but additionally accessibility is tough, uh, hover states or, you know, unselected states for press states, uh, contrast. There's, there's a lot of accessibility issues with it. So is it a trend that I think sticks around? No. Was it cool the first time I saw it? Yeah, it looked pretty neat just because it looked different. Everything is starting to look the same. Everything looks material and something looks different. Uh, it caught my attention. I thought it was pretty cool, but I don't plan on injecting it into any of my freelance work. It definitely won't be seen the light of day in any of Domo's work or anything I do full time. Um, that's my two cents. It might be fun just to do a, a UI project in it just for the sake of seeing what you could come up with, but I don't know. It's got so many issues is that I'm not, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be doing it. So next question. Every morning, my team holds a stand up. This is my first job I've ever heard. Wait, this is my first job and had never heard of this style of meeting before. It should seem pretty straightforward, but every morning I end up frazzled. Help. <laughs> stand-ups are fun. Um, okay, so a couple stories. What are stand-ups? They're typically just quick syncs so that product managers, developers, designers can all talk and hold us, uh, ourselves accountable to what we worked on yesterday, what we're doing today, and any roadblocks we have. That's typically the format for a stand-up. Um, I call these, I don't, I, I don't call these people call standups stand up for the reason that they're supposed to be meetings where you actually stand up and not sitting down. The intention is that these are quick meetings. Um, I was at a startup years ago where we actually would plank in our stand up meetings just to keep it shorter. Um, some people tend to talk and talk and go into details that it's not applicable for everyone in the group. And therefore you end up spending more time than necessary in standups. Uh, so one of the things that we did to combat this is we would all plank during standups and that definitely shortened it. Everyone got everything they needed addressed, uh, real done real quick and a matter of 15 seconds a person and you go around four or five people and you're definitely feeling it. Uh, our standups at Domo tend to be 15 to 20 minutes. Their teams are bigger. Um, one of the things I love to see done in standups isn't necessarily the collaboration aspect to it, but the whole, 
hey, I'm blocked on this. I need to chat with so-and-so at some point today. Uh, if I could get 15 minutes later on, that'd be great. And that person notes it, and we can move on to the next thing. Um, really, if you're wondering what are people expecting of me at a stand-up, again, go back to what did you work on yesterday? What are you working on today? And uh, what roadblocks do you have? Where might you need help from somebody else? Oh, oh, let me add this. Prepare for them. Don't try and think it up on the spot because it's it never comes off well. So spend five minutes prior to stand up just noting, looking at your calendar from yesterday. What did you do? What are you doing today? Have some sort of plan so that you go to stand up prepared. That will get you into the habit of doing these things a little bit better. I'd like to know your opinion about switching or transitioning into UX from another field within the climate of today's conditions. The climate of today's conditions are unprecedented. So I don't have great answers for you, only that not a lot of places are hiring. So take that in mind. Um, but with that said, you know, if your goal or your dream is to get into the UX field, get into the UX field, start hustling and work your tail off and do the things that I've professed for a long time, network, work on your soft skills, you know, and, and, and work your way into a position now, later, I, I don't know, there's no better time than today, right? So, so go ahead and get started on it. Uh, is it going to be tougher right now? Yes. Just for the sake that not everyone's hiring, but uh, don't let that stop you from jumping into it. Um, make that transition. It's not gonna be an easy one. But there's no logic in my opinion saying, you know what, I'm gonna wait a year. You know, what's funny is when I do these unwritten things, I have like that little voice in my head that keeps going, well, Dylan, what about on this side? Okay, I understand the situation, right? If you're going, I can't walk away from my current job because I need to pay the bills. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, then don't walk away from your job. But if you can start that side hustle, start that networking while you hold down a job, so that when you have the opportunity to switch careers, you don't have to extend extend that period of no work, uh, or you can shorten that period as, as much as possible. Yeah, I think you might as well get started on it today. The next question, oh, this one actually came from uh, the Slack community as well, and there's a little bit of discussion around this. Um, but the question was, how do you deal with broken trust in the workplace? When someone's actions break your trust, how do you deal or repair that trust? Um, trust is something that is, is very human. Uh, it's not necessarily only for the professional workplace. Uh, so my answers go back to, or I guess what I'll share, it goes back to uh, what I deem appropriate for any scenario in which trust is broken. Trust obviously needs to then be repaired. How do you go about repairing it? I think also depends on the nature of how that trust was broken. So let's jump into a scenario. Let's say the trust was broken uh, because someone just doesn't think you've got the design chops to be doing what is asked of you. Uh, they've seen your work and now they just don't trust that you can handle the job. How do you go about repairing that? Um, First, I'm going to assume that you know trust has been broken. Obviously, if we're answering this question, you know that somebody doesn't trust your design anymore. So what I would recommend is first confronting it. Um, it's going to be an awkward situation, but if you need to approach a design manager or a product manager and say, hey, listen, I, I know I've probably fallen short uh, from your perspective and you know, you might not want to be giving me the next big project that comes along because I let you down somewhere along the lines, but uh, clearly that wasn't my intention. How do you, how can you help me understand where I dropped the ball or where I didn't meet expectations uh, and try and get a feel for what it is that they were expecting to be done. And ultimately you didn't follow through. Uh, then I think from that point, you can create a plan of attack and you can move forward. If the trust is broken just because of a personality conflict, or let's say you did something, let's say, ooh, this one happens. Uh, 
let's say you were playing the politics game and you said something behind somebody's back that you probably shouldn't have shared or said, uh, and it's come around to them and now they're hearing about it. How do you address that type of broken trust? Um, unfortunately, it's the same way. You've got to address it head on. And in this scenario, it might be accepting fault. It may be apologizing. Um, you should probably be apologizing. It could be a myriad of, uh, of reasons, but taking responsibility for your actions, uh, accepting fault, and then and, and then moving on, uh, ultimately, you're going to have to make up that that ground that you've lost with that individual. So, you know, I'll go back to what my mom always shared, kill them with kindness. Uh, I grew up in a family of boys, and that was something that we had to do often, kill them with kindness, and uh, see if you can repair that trust over time. Uh, it, it's not an overnight solution, but in these scenarios, and, and it may not even be with trust. I think this could be with any sort of damaged relationship and in the workplace over trust over whatever it may be they've always got to first be addressed head on and i personally don't know how to tackle any of these situations without first addressing it head on they can be uncomfortable situations but trying to move past these things with some sort of unspoken conversation or just assuming everyone's on the same page and we can all move on past it. I've never seen that work. So step one in these scenarios, address it head on, take accountability, apologize if next necessary. Um, may not be that you're gonna get an apology in response, be okay with that. And then ultimately look for these situations as opportunities to grow. Uh, they may present the opportunities to make your weaknesses stronger. So. Maybe this is just an all-around learning experience. You can grow from it, and hopefully in time, you can demonstrate to that individual that you have learned and grown from it, and trust can be repaired. I don't know. That's off the cuff and maybe not as in-depth. So uh, with any of these questions, if you want some follow-ups, feel free to shoot me a message. You can find me in that Slack group. Uh, I have t I, I've actually been putting more time into Slack than I have into my LinkedIn messages falling behind on those LinkedIn messages. But you know, if you wanna get a hold of me, join that Slack community, I will be there. Um, and then other great resources are there as well. So if you don't hear from me, you're gonna hear from other talented individuals who've got more insight than, than I might. So join the Slack community, ask your questions. I'm happy to do some follow-ups if that's necessary. Other than that, that's it. Thanks for joining me on this special Q&A session of Design Today, episode 70. It's been a trip. Thank you for sending in your questions. We can do it again in a couple months. I don't mind doing this. So if you've got questions, shoot them on over and uh, we can cover them next time. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you.